Welcome to Cat's first Meow, or Monday Essential Operating Wetware. Meow is our weekly cat-specific tech talk, where we give you, the civilian users, information to make the most informed purchasing decisions. So, let's jump straight into the deep end of the pool. Today we will discuss Cat's use of super alloys, and the manufacturing processes to harness these materials. However, to understand cat construction methodology, you must understand suppressor or silencer design theory of the past, combined with the elite user needs of the future, as they are separating gradually but consistently over time. Sound suppression, since the outset of suppressor design in the early 1900s, has become a core design imperative for the majority of manufacturers of today. Hiram Percy Maxim's first commercial silencer design patent was coupled with a patent for a motor vehicle muffler, so we can likely assume that sound suppression was Maxim's primary motivator. As Maxim Silent Firearms Company stated in early advertising, the silencer checks the muzzle blast. Instead of the powder gases being liberated into the air instantaneously when the bullet emerges from the muzzle, as in the ordinary gun, the gases are caught by the silencer. They are made to whirl around inside the silencer. This whirling forces the gas to fly out from the center by centrifugal force, leaving a central space, just the same as when water is whirled around in a set bowl. A hole or space forms in the center. This leaves the space for the bullet to make its passage. The gas cannot pass through this space until it slows down. This causes it to discharge into the atmosphere gradually. This absolutely prevents report noise and also reduces recoil over two-thirds. As the hole in the silencer is much larger than the bullet, the latter does not touch anything in passing through and consequently accuracy of flight is just the same whether the silencer is off or on. This Maxim design theory has been tweaked, modified, reimagined, and incorporated over different materials. But the fundamental design engineering principle is in most suppressors you probably use today. However, this thinking was based around silencing the process of discharging around. Today, pressure wave propagation, flash or spark suppression, temperature durability, concentricity, weight, and internal wear are of equal importance. And in many operational environments, some of these categories rate even higher than sound suppression to elite users, meaning a user may choose a suppressor with a 4 decibels higher sound signature if it's lighter or more durable than a competitor product. In high operational theaters, a suppressor needs to aid in reduced sound signature, but a suppressor that cannot withstand the heat generated by multiple gunfights or starts to have large amounts of carbon and lead buildup becomes ineffective to the user. This is why a large part of most government selection criteria is built around the destructive testing phase. Therefore, CAT's parent R&D labs design suppressors to cover the widest range of likely measurable outcomes, looking to essentially make the best all-round product for elite users. Now you have an understanding of what CAT is trying to accomplish. We'll start with the materials and manufacturing process used to make ODB, our first CAT release, a 7.62mm specific suppressor. Let's have a specific focus around the nickel chromium superalloy known by its family trade name, Inconel. It has an incredibly high tolerance for extreme temperatures ranging from cryogenic to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit or 1093 degrees Celsius, a tensile strength of 1400 MPa, 213 KSI, and a yield strength of 1240 MPa, 179 KSI. CAT uses a proprietary Inconel mix, similar to Inconel 718 or IN718, precipitation hardened to increase strength even further. As an age-hardened alloy, IN718 can be fabricated into very complex parts, and its welding characteristics are also outstanding, including superior corrosion resistance to many acids, salt water, and alkalis. Due to the combination of these properties, IN718 is used in the creation of industrial and aviation turbines, nuclear reactors, liquid-fueled rockets, cryogenic tanks, and other products. The use of this nickel-based superalloy can be difficult to manufacture in a conventional production process. DMLS can lead to an ease of fabrication. However, DMLS-created parts are reliant on the various parameters of building direction and post-processing heat treatment. For CAT suppressor construction, a laser-based fusion bed method is adopted. All CAT IN718 suppressors undergo a post-production heat treatment process, where the metallurgical properties are enriched. 
The DMLS process used to produce cat suppressors offers complex shape geometry and ensures corrosive behavior is superior compared to conventional materials. What does this all mean, though, to the civilian consumer? While titanium alloys offer lightweight advantages over IN718 in a direct comparison, IN718 has a higher operating temperatures without compromising mechanical properties, generally higher values for strength and elongation at break, and almost twice the Young's modulus, which is a mechanical property that measures the tensile or compressive stiffness of a solid material when the force is applied lengthwise. One fundamental commonality of these materials, however, is the difficult mechanical post-processing with conventional tools due to their high hardness. But this is important under the high temperatures that semi and full automatic suppressors work. DMLS printing in super alloys allows for singular design and complex design functionality. CAT suppressors are designed to withstand both high rates of fire, but are designed to be clean via synthetics acids that would decimate 17-4 and other steel alloys. For maximum performance, CAT suppressors should always be caliber and direct thread specific, with an inbuilt threaded QD mount as a close second. CAT understands that some civilian users do like to use other manufacturers' QD and muzzle devices, but warns that this can lead to a higher chance of baffle and end cap strikes generally not seen in direct thread models. This is primarily because bore tolerances may not be enough to support the misalignment of QD mounts or the unequal pressures created by certain manufacturers, muzzle devices inside CAT suppressors. Civilian users should always be educated by the retailer on correct attachment and the potential repercussions of the mismatching of different suppressor manufacturers' products. We're open for your questions.